Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's tonight in the Big 12 North. Number seven, Nebraska, getting set to take on Kansas State. The Wildcats picked by many to finish last in their division, but they're undefeated. And tonight, here they come with a chance for an upset. in the middle of this sea of purple you know Nebraska fans always travel well and tonight the Huskers have their first conference game as you take a look at the Big 12 North standings Kansas State already with a Big 12 victory over Iowa State and with all due respect to the rapidly improving Cyclones this is an entirely different deal that Kansas State will face tonight glad to have you with us in Manhattan alongside my partners Craig James Jesse Palmer and Jen Brown down on the field I'm Reese Davis well tonight Nebraska comes in its final go round in the Big 12 guys before they head to the Big Ten next year Huskers always have a target on them but maybe a little bit different this time because they think they can win the national championship in a little over two years I think Nebraska has rediscovered its swagger under head coach Bo Pelini here's a football team that finished last season with so much momentum they've been able to carry that over to this year and Bo Pelini told us earlier in the week this team now expects to win championships well he is a very special player and freshman quarterback Taylor Martinez he's explosive and Craig with his ability this team believes that they're legit national championship contenders but we've seen the good and we've seen the bad yeah. now we want to find out if Taylor Martinez can be a quarterback a quarterback you have to be if you want to compete for the title both in the conference and for national now he started out with three straight 100 yard rushing games but last week is what we're all looking at South Dakota State <laughs> Six of 14 with two interceptions. And so, you know, if you want to win a championship, your quarterback's got to be able to throw the football. And tonight, I think Kansas State's going to load up, and they're going to force Martinez to throw it to see if he can beat him with his arm. Right, Kansas State has been aiming for this game since 1991 under Bill Snyder, 11-4, and four, when they have a week off to prepare, and they can make a statement tonight. He's a good football coach, isn't he? And no now, question. Now, we watched tape yesterday, and we were studying Kansas State, and we saw that UCF game, their last ball game. We're like, woo -hoo! Not really impressive. Then we watched UCLA. They beat UCLA, a good, talented football team. Which team shows up tonight? They are good at home under Snyder since 93. 9 7 and 1 against ranked opponents. They can get it done, but they can't have any mistakes in this ballgame. Well, Kansas State running back Daniel Thomas has an opportunity to make a statement tonight personally. Comes into the game, fifth in the nation in rushing yards. He understands that with a big performance tonight on national television against a top 10 team and one of the best defenses against Nebraska. He can put his name squarely in the middle of the Heisman Trophy debate. It is critical that Daniel Thomas does not try and press and look for the 80-yard touchdown run each and every play. He plays within himself. He does himself a favor, and he gives Kansas State its best chance to win tonight. And Nebraska knows that number eight's the man they have to stop the man in charge of the Huskers, Bo Pelini, with Jen Brown. Coach, Daniel Thomas leads the Big 12, averaging 157 rushing yards a game. How do you slow him down tonight? Well, he's got to get a lot of people into football. He's a good football player. they got a good offensive line and a good scheme, but uh, I think our guys are looking forward to that challenge. You said after your 17-3 win over South Dakota State that you were embarrassed by your team's efforts. How do you make sure that doesn't happen tonight well I think they learned from that experience I think they're just looking forward to starting big 12 play and starts tonight this great environment should be a heck of a football game all right thanks coach thanks. Reese all right Jen and across the sideline from Bo Pelini is Bill Snyder today celebrating his 71st birthday his second tour in Manhattan and he is by far the winningest coach in Wildcat history 146 wins and he is 4-0 for the first time since the 2003 season Nebraska won the toss. They have deferred. Kansas State will get the ball first. The Cornhuskers have quite a weapon in their kickoff specialist, Adi Kunalik, among the nation's leaders the last three seasons in touchbacks already with 12 touchbacks on 28 kickoffs so far this year. And it is time to get things started up in the Big 12 North in the Little Apple tonight. Kanalik hammers it deep and nobody's returning that when it sailed over William Powell's head and Kansas State will put it in play in its own 20 yard line touchback number 13 for Kanalik on the season. 
Guiding the Kansas State attack is Carson Kaufman. He is a senior from Peculiar, Missouri. He's uh, had okay stats so far. Lost his job midway through last year, but they believe in him, Jesse. If there's a word to describe Carson Kaufman's career at K-State, it's inconsistency. He's third in the conference in passing efficiency this year, but he's thrown untimely interceptions. He's got to be on tonight. This is the best pass defense in the country. First snap of the game. Kaufman's going to put it up. He throws it to Daniel Thomas out of the backfield, and the Kansas State star back gets the initial first down of the night. How about the impact players from K-State has? Well, Daniel Thomas is a workhorse. He's averaging 26 carries per game. That's the most in the nation. He's the type of running back that gets stronger as the game goes on. And very good out of the backfield, as you just saw there with his hands. Let's go to the other side here. Jared Crick. These guys, they've got to play extremely well. Levante David, a good player on the linebacker level, can be an impressive night, hopefully, for the Black Shirts. David is the Big 12's leading tackler. Thomas caught one. Now he's running with it, and he's stopped by Prince Amakamara. This is a Nebraska defense that understands how much of a monster Daniel Thomas can be. Carl Polini, the defensive coordinator, told us early this week, we got to get a face on him each and every play. That pass out of the backfield, if he's wanting to impress his future employers, that's what they're looking for. They want to see that as much as they want to see between the tackles. Thomas is lined up in the slot, bottom of your screen. Kaufman's second pass of the night. Again, he was going for Thomas, and he couldn't hang on to it. It'll bring up a third down pressure coming from Pierre Allen. We're already seeing the approach by Kansas State. Can Carson Kaufman come out and loosen up that front line of Nebraska? And this is a big curveball for K-State offensively because nobody expected them to come out throwing the football on their first drive. They're obviously opening up the playbook. They know the challenge ahead of them in this black shirt defense. Wildcats have completed or converted, I should say, just under 42% on third down this year. Hoffman gets rid of it complete. Quarles has it. Football is on the ground. The scramble for it. And Kansas State retains possession. So the first down completion to Aubrey Quarles, and they were fortunate to get the football back. I think this starts at the play. Obviously, Nebraska has not gotten the call from the sidelines to adjust to the personnel adjustment of Kansas State's call. Carl Polanyi, the defensive coordinator, wanted to dial up pressure. I think he got confused by the bunch look. Players weren't ready at the snap, and that gave Carson Kaufman much more time. Thomas. Bouncing to the outside, Daniel gets inside the 40 and down to about the 39. Seven-yard pickup on first down. So they've opened up the box. It's six in the box by Nebraska because of the passing early in this game. That allows Thomas a chance to run the ball. And one of the most impressive things watching Daniel Thomas, he is so patient. Did you see there how he just waited for the hole to develop, didn't bounce outside too soon? Wow. Thomas has it again. He is stuck and stood up by Levante David, the Big 12's leading tackler, has a solo stop. And Nebraska on defense plays what's called a two-gap defense. They play with one less player in the box to stop the run. The defensive line, they want to take on double teams, eat up blocks, so the linebackers can, can roam free, like you see right here. But those linebackers have to play downfield and make tackles. They cannot hesitate. Kansas State needs two to move the chains. Thomas looking for room. First down, Kansas State. Different run that time by Thomas. In the previous down, I thought he danced in the hole rather than taking on David and running through him for the first down. That time you saw him with a sense of urgency to get the first down, lowered his shoulder. So a second, third down conversion on this drive for Kansas State. Thomas has it again. 
plows his way inside the 30 yard line. Thomas is the nation's fifth leading rusher and he got the season off to a great start going from 234 against the Bruins. You see this right here only 76 against UCF. He was running against a lot of seven eight nine man boxes but the bottom line is their offensive line got whipped up front by UFC UCF. They got to do much better tonight. Thomas has accounted for most of the offense on this drive both running and receiving Kaufman his first run of the night Carson Kaufman is going to be a couple of yards short of the first down design quarterback draw with an extra back and blocker up in the hole we asked him yesterday to Carson yeah, do you, are you confident enough to run the football he, he told us he's getting better as a runner he's not Taylor Martinez but he can do enough in this offense to get positive yards set up third and shorts and okay, now Kaufman is split out to the left in the Wildcat the Wildcat is in the Wildcat formation it's Thomas he didn't get much. He didn't get the first down. And Thomas has plenty of experience taking a snap in junior college and in high school. He was a quarterback. He told us that a lot of times in junior college, they told him count to three if he didn't see anybody take off running. But he's going to be left with a fourth down here. See Thomas is going to get wrapped up here at the line of scrimmage. The offense is staying on the field right now. Keep in mind, last year in a loss to Nebraska, K-State got down inside Nebraska's 35-yard line five times. They came away with only three points. Wildcat formation again. Nebraska has it trailed this season. Thomas now asking for the timeout and flag also flying. We'll see if he got the timeout called before moving them back five. There's no foul on the play. Timeout, Kansas State. So the Wildcats at the Nebraska 25 trying to keep the drive alive on fourth down when you come back to Manhattan. The crowd in Manhattan, those who bleed purple, serenading their head coach Bill Snyder, who is, who is a revered figure in Manhattan for sure. After reviving this program, which was regarded as the worst in college football when he arrived for his first tour of duty in 89. But right now, he's looking at a fourth and two. And Jesse, you would like to see Kansas State kick a field goal here. Don't like it at all. And now Nebraska is going to call a timeout and take it over. So tell me why. This is a Nebraska defense that does not give up a lot of explosive plays. Coming into tonight, they've only given up 32 plays of 10 or more yards. They are going to force Kansas State to sustain long drives and drive the field. When Kansas State gets into scoring territory, they need the points. The points are at a premium against what I think is the best defense in college football. Number seven team in the country. If you're going to beat them, you've got to get out of it. All right. Well, the debate has room to go on. So due to some Saturday night football on ABC, one of the great rivalries in the sport with sort of a renewed sense of interest. Florida State and Miami, 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Regional coverage of that game. Some on the West Coast will see USC take on Stanford. We've got a fourth and two opening drive. This is the 11th play of the opening possession and Kansas State going to try to convert on fourth and two. Kaufman needs a pair. Got company puts his head down. It's going to be close and I think they're going to mark him short. Jared Trick was out there along with Levante David and the Huskers get the stop. I would disagree with the play call. I would not put the football in the hands of Carson Kaufman to run for a first down. I don't mind going for it, but that's not the explosive enough player to get the job done. I just think you need the points early in this game to give your team some confidence. That was a great drive. They just marched all the way down the field. Congratulate yourself. Take the points. Take the 3 nothing lead. 12 plays, and Purple has nothing to show for it. And now here comes T-Magic, Taylor Martinez, the Nebraska quarterback with his first snap of the night.
give is to Roy Hallou Jr. and Nebraska goes forward on his first place stopped by Stephen Harrison. Martinez has been electric, Jesse. Well, he's a freshman and he won a, a three-man quarterback competition this past spring and summer and, and by doing so, became the first ever freshman to start a quarterback on the open day, on the opening day in Nebraska history. But as we said during the open, the two interceptions last week, he's going to see a stacked defense. And if they want to get to where he wants to get them, he's going to have to throw the ball effectively down the field. And he throws his first pass of the night will be good enough for a first down. Ben Cotton making the grab his first catch of the night and second of the year. How about impact players when the Huskers have it? The running back Roy Hallou Jr. is one of the most well-rounded running backs in the country. Catching the ball out of the backfield, blocking, play action fakes, he does it all. Now Niles Paul, number six, is a guy that's going to help the quarterback out, Martinez. But Brandon Kinney has 17 set receptions to lead the team so far. And on defense for Kansas State, Brandon Harrell was a freshman All-American in 2008. He missed much of last season with a knee injury. In fact, considered leaving football before being talked out of it by Bill Snyder. And down on the field right now for Kansas State is their starting defensive tackle, Brazell Brown. Brown is a converted tight end from Houston. And we'll take a look and try to see if we can figure out exactly what happened to Brazell on that pass that Martinez hit Cotton on. Here he is right here coming in to play late. He's a big time player on this front. Looks like Wolf, mm. he gets that right leg stuck in mm. the ground and the pile comes back on that leg. Looks like it extends the knee. Yeah. They can't afford to lose this guy. 19 tackles on the season. A very active player, very dominant, strong, high motor guy inside. Peyton Kirk takes his place in the lineup. The Huskers pick up the first down. Martinez gave it to Halu. Halu hit on the outside and stopped. Alex Reback making a fine play in the open field. One of the things that really scared Kansas State head coach Bill Snyder was just how multiple this Nebraska offense is in the running game. Zone read, option, they go downhill. You got three guys that can carry the football. Gave them headaches in terms of game plan. But the thing I like about Kansas State on their defensive side and this coaching staff, there's a lot of years of experience. They teach technique and responsibility, and generally, the defense stays at home. And second down to nine facing the freshman. Here's where he's dangerous. Martinez has the first and gets into Kansas State territory. He's crunched, but not before another solid pickup of 14. At the snap, watch the flow of the offensive line go to the right. Look at all the eye candy that you have to pay attention to on defense. And you open up that lane for Martinez, who has blazing speed. You can't defend that. And because he's a freshman, offensive coordinator Sean Watson wants to protect him. So you get him out of the pocket. You give him a throw first, run second option. Easy read for him on the road. Another first down. The other tailback, Rex Burkhead, his first carry of the night, and Burkhead gets inside the 40. He'll be close to another Nebraska first down. Rex Burkhead, a guy that figures into this offense, he's averaging 8.5 yards every time he touches the football. They throw it to him or give it to him in the zone read. Nice job by Taylor Martinez identifying the front, giving the football when he was supposed to. He didn't do a good job of that against South Dakota State. You mentioned the two tailbacks, only one yard and two carries separated Alou and Burkhead coming into this game. Martinez on the sneak and the change will move. First down, Nebraska. When you talk about Nebraska's football team in there, that the fact that they're back, it's the offensive line. I mean, that offensive line up front is strong, talented, and they they you seldom see them getting beat and allowing penetration to where it disrupts Martinez. They have four upperclassmen up there. They got three seniors and a junior. There's a lot of experience, a lot of starts under those belts up front for Nebraska. Martinez. Down the middle, right on the money. He's got Mike McNeil. McNeil inside the 15, and Martinez threw it like a dart, and the Huskers are in the red zone. Very important 
decision this year outside McNeil a former tight end they wanted to get him out in space so they could have another player Ben Cotton play tight end and McNeil's made the conversion and learning how to play in space when you have a threat of running the football you give those play fakes all those linebackers creep close to the line of scrimmage the open part of the field is the middle part and that's opening up a lot right now for Nebraska bobbled snap Martinez still on his feet Taylor Martinez touchdown Cornhuskers. He is among the nation's leaders in scoring and Taylor Martinez has his ninth touchdown of the year. First thing that flashed in my mind when I watched this, bobble snap, and I thought of a very speedy quarterback named Denard Robinson. I don't what think he, I don't he think just take off once he finally gets in his hands. I don't think Taylor Martinez ran through the hole he was supposed to there. He just kind of got the football freaked out and went and found daylight. Alex Henry puts on the finishing touches, and Nebraska's up by seven. You can freak out, Jesse, when you run a 4 0 <laughs> in the 40. <laughs> Taylor Martinez, who actually averages slightly more yards per carry than Denard Robinson. He has his first touchdown of the night, and the Huskers are up. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. See what's new on Applebee's 2 for 20 menu. Classics you love and new flavors you'll crave. And in part by the new Ford Fiesta. It's a pretty big deal. Children of the corn get it for the first time tonight. Eight plays, 76 yards, a little less than three and a half minutes in the seventh ranked team in the land. Up by seven. That's balanced offense. They had 76 yards on the drive. Martinez accounted for 30 through the for 31 through the air and 30 on the ground, including the 14-yard touchdown run. You see his backup, Cody Green, watching. Putting Nebraska fans on hand, Bill Snyder Family Stadium, as there always are. Roddy Kanalik will kick off for the second time tonight. Kicks that meatball through the back of the end zone and K-State will start on the 20. Go back to that touchdown by Taylor Martinez. This is supposed to be a designed run behind a pulling guard and a kick out fullback. But there's Prezel Brown back in the game. He does not get blocked. Taylor Martinez heads up play, sees that. And he's got a cutback lane. And after that, it's that 4 nothing 40 speed Craig's talking about. He just beats all those purple shirts to the end zone. Well, he is second in the nation. The runs are 20 yards or longer. Also second in runs of 40 or longer. And we needed 14, and that's what he got to put Nebraska up by seven. So Daniel Thomas, who was productive in the opening drive, greeted in the backfield and a good solid run, about three or four. Don't know y'all's observation, but mine clearly to this point in the second drive, the offensive line far better than their last game against UCF. Yeah, they're playing with a little bit more intensity. They look like they're playing faster. Certainly, they get up for this challenge. They got their butts down. They're, they got pad level. They're just a different unit so far in this game. Keeping it on the ground with Thomas P.J. Smith came around to make the stop. It'll bring up a third down for the Wildcats. In this defense, though, those safeties coming up and getting after it and flying to the football, so important. P.J. Smith, not just a good pass guy, but really good at getting to the ball. Kansas State had it for 11 plays last time on the drive and came up with nothing. Converted two of their three third downs and they need one here to avoid going three and out. pressure coming on Kaufman has to get rid of it he's got Thomas Thomas turns it up and gets the first down Prince of Mucamara able to get Thomas off his feet but not before the Wildcat running back moves the chains I'll let you talk about the footwork and buying the time from Kaufman I want to show the route though of Thomas and how the best player on their team is being worked to get the football in his hands drives inside and back to the outside beautiful execution yeah, Nebraska had one extra rusher coming at cough and just able to backpedal to the last moment to get that football out hey, 
Kaufman to throw on first down. Wanted to take a shot. Checks down to Thomas. Thomas trying to put a move on Eric Haig just lost his footing and he might have run for a while if he'd been able to stay up. Carson Kaufman's decision making this year has been shaky and here's a great call on first down big play action pass he got maximum protection only two guys out in the route everyone's covered don't force it check it down to your Heisman Trophy contender let him go do something with it. There's a difference in catching the ball running with a football versus starting from the eye back position he's in the open space it's a new learning experience for Thomas out in the flats. Thomas. Out of the direct snap that is his 12th touch and 16 offensive plays for Kansas State. But I like the play calling so far on offense from Kansas State. They're mixing it up. We've seen designed runs downhill with two backs in the backfield. We've seen them spread out. We've seen them throw to the running back. They've gotten in the Wildcat. They've been very multiple so far. There are the co-offensive coordinators for the Wildcats, Dana Dimmel and Del Miller. Both guys working from the press box. And Trying to come up with a play that will convert another third down. A State's done it three times tonight. Coffin. Complete. Change move again. Quarles with his second catch of the night. Coffin threaded that one in there. Pretty good coverage by the Huskers. 61% last year in his completion percentage. And again, the receivers working hard to get open. Look at Quarles work to the inside and then drive back out and gets himself open. As an offense, when you have to drive 12, 14 plays to go score, there's a lot of room there for bad things to happen. Drop passes, penalties. K-State so far has been very precise. Thomas plowing toward the 50 be stopped there by Levante Davis. And one of the reasons Daniel Thomas is so good, he always gets positive yards. This offense has a chance to keep third downs manageable because he's always falling forward and getting positive yards. You'll watch tonight, these safeties in Nebraska, how important it is for them to get inside on the run, get up in there in a hurry. Thomas has got to run past those edge rushers. When they're coming off the edge, he's got to beat them to the line of scrimmage. We saw Thomas head to the sideline to get a quick break. William Powell's in the game and has the football. Powell into Nebraska territory and across the 45. I think he'll be just a tad short of the first down, but a good strong run by the senior from Duncanville, Texas. It's very important that when these guys are pulling and they're coming not to bow, but to get down the line of scrimmage in a hurry, get up in the hole. You got to get there. That, that running back can't wait on you. Get in there and go. You see big Kenneth Mayfield, the right guard, pulling all 350 pounds of him, getting him on the outside at the point of attack. Kaufman sneaking straight ahead on third down. Officials coming in to mark it. One coming from the far side appears to have given Kaufman enough to move the chains. Kansas State converted four of its first five opportunities on third down. And that is huge because Nebraska coming into this game was only giving up 19% on third down when opponents had to throw the football. They're able to be great on first and second down, force you into third and longs, but because Kansas State has been able to pound the football on the ground, keep these third down manageables, they're in good shape offensively. They're great third down regardless. Wherever it is, 44% conversions. The guys conveniently neglected to make the call as to whether he got it or not. I thought he had it all the way, Greg. So, right? You're taking it for granted. <laughs> That's right. Non issue. <laughs> and you see what Kansas State has been able to do to keep this explosive Nebraska offense off the field. Of course, in those eight plays, Nebraska put points up. Kansas State about to run his 21st, and the Wildcats have yet to scratch. Coppin. Wanted Broderick Smith, but Smith was stopped nicely. Excellent job by Alfonso Dennard, who the defensive coaches at Nebraska believe is just as good as their star corner on the other side, Prince Amukamara. One of the reasons this is the best pass defense in college football, Nebraska has two shutdown corners on the outside. Alfonso Dennard, one of those guys, they had eight defensive backs return this year that had starting experience, and that shows up every time you watch these guys play. Dennard is a prospect at the next level. We might have to use another technique at the next one, but it was very effective here. Second down. 
out in the flat to the fullback, Raiden Wilson, and that one did not fool Amu Kamara for a second. When you visit with Carl Planey, the defensive coordinator at Nebraska, he's not a fan of loading up eight, nine, ten guys in the box. And you see this in this game tonight. He's like, okay, we're going to go play whatever they give us, and we're going to play balanced and expect our guys to do their job. Carl's a very smart guy. Kansas State has been very good on third down, but this is a long one. It's the longest third down situation of the night. David coming on the blitz, and he gets Kaufman down. Now the blitzer's going to come, and he's going to come from the outside. Pelini, a very smart guy. He's not going to sit there too long and let him dial up deals on him. Back has two different... Too many people coming for one back to block. They green dog the running back. William Powell didn't think he had to stay in and block because his blitz are stopped. Ryan Doerr punting it away for the Wildcat. Niles Paul trying to clear out all of his teammates. But Niles had a notion for just a second to jump in and grab it on the high hop, but instead Kansas State will touch it down inside the five. Your second look at Taylor Martinez and the Husker offense when you come back. Well, the Kansas State defense really needs to take a page from Willie Wildcat, who he'll put his face in the fan. Get him laying out the Husker, although I, I do believe there might have been some chicanery involved. I'm not sure that was an actual Nebraska booster. Could be an imposter, but Willie keeping the head up, seeing what he hits, hits what he sees. Here's tonight's weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's and plenty of tasty things on the item this weekend, including a battle of beatings in the big house. Michigan and Michigan State game. Be the first real test with the top-notch defense for Denard Robinson and the Wolverines. Kalu getting the carry for Nebraska and getting out close to the 10-yard line. On that opening drive, we saw Taylor Martinez work his magic and you know he's a young quarterback by college standards. He's a redshirt freshman. You see Bill Snyder looking on, but uh Quarter's coming to a close. Martinez hasn't played the position that long. Groomed to be an athlete from the time he was a youngster, but he's only played quarterback since he was a junior in high school. Couldn't prove it by K-State in the first quarter. Huskers up seven. Show me what you got now. Here in Manhattan, Kansas, about to start the second quarter. You see just outside Bill Snyder Family Stadium, the ESPN Direct TV drive to the national championship bus. We use it on our coverage of college football throughout the season. Also use it as a ride from the hotel here. Taking that thing to the airport right after we get done. Comfortable two-hour ride on the bus. Halu has it in the open field, lowers his shoulder, and moves the chain. Stephen Harrison was on the business end of that hit from Halu. Now you talk about a good block by your tight end, Ben Cotton, 81 on the right side. Watch the block down in here. This is why they moved Mike McNeil to the inside receiver so they could get big Ben Cotton, 255 pounds on the edge. Roy Lou Jr. told us last year that on his recruiting trip to Lincoln, Nebraska, it was very unattractive. <laughs> he told us the football was very attractive to him. He's made the most of it for his career. Burkhead. Back into the game and Rex gets across the 20. You know, let's go back and let's talk about Martinez. At the end of the Holiday Bowl last year, everybody in the country got jumped on Nebraska's bandwagon because Sean Watson opened up the offense. We thought, wow, hey, they're coming back strong, but we were thinking it was going to be Zach Lee or Cody Green. Well, he won a three-way quarterback competition, and Bo Pelini had no preconceived notions during that competition. They weren't sure if he was going to play quarterback, wide receiver, maybe free safety, but he kept making big plays against a great defense every day, and here he is. Martinez keeps it, and there's a problem. Put it on the ground, and 
Nebraska came into this game with the second most fumbles in the nation and frankly the Cornhuskers have been fortunate that is their 17th fumble of the year they've only lost seven of them you know what but this is where as a ball carrier he's got to get up and in there and it comes from behind but you have to know you're in heavy traffic that's the danger when you do a lot of option and you do a lot of zone read in your offense there's the football exchanging between the center and the quarterback the quarterback and the fullback the quarterback and the tailback number of fumbles that Nebraska's had Florida has had more but most of those coming on the errant snaps Marquise Pouncey Nebraska just put it on the ground too often place is rocking play clock was getting down deep Martinez facing his first third down situation of the night and the Huskers have to use a timeout we'll see if they move the change when you come back. Nebraska looking at a third down seven Huskers up seven to nothing. Let's take a look at tonight's intelligent move other than painting yourself purple brought to you by Mercedes Benz. I would say it was an intelligent decision by young Taylor Martinez to bring his a game tonight outside moves the pocket clearly has the legs the ability to run the football. But this is what impressed me so far in this ballgame is passing. Yeah, his running ability is going to open up a lot of passing windows. They've had a lot of design runs for him as well. Lots of success early for the Cornhuskers offense. And now the freshman from Corona, California, is called on to convert a third and about six. Try to do it with his feet. Not going to get there. Rizal Brown, who was shaken up early in the game, back in to put the stop on Martinez, and the Huskers will have to punt it away. Well, on this play, Kansas State only decides to rush three players. And Rizal Brown up front is able to beat his man, get in the backfield to stop this design quarterback draw. He's lined up at the nose tackle position, splits it, and there he is. Big stop for Rizal Brown. Alex Henry runs it away. Jermaine Thompson. He'll be hauled down at his own 47. Kansas State will have an opportunity to even it up when we come back to Manhattan. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. Nebraska with a 7-0 lead, but the Cornhuskers just had to punt it away. And Kansas State to start this possession ball just short of its own 48-yard line. Carson Kaufman at quarterback. Daniel Thomas has hit and knocked down by Jared Frick. Now the Wildcats good field position here. That was a really important stop for the K-State defense. Uh, you know what? And this defense, watch the linebackers. Look at David come up and a point of attack smokes the fullback. No murder, no, no, no surge there by the fullback, so nowhere to run for Thomas. The field position is going to be big for K-State. If they're going to be asked offensively to put together long drives to score points, much better you start at the 50 than at your own 10. Come in, come in. Thomas wow. into Nebraska territory. I saw something there. That, that was th Thomas has to run hard to the line of scrimmage. Nebraska's coming up quick. And those linebackers, which we just saw the previous play, has been an uncertainty for Nebraska. Now, they, he attacked. And now to convert this third down, Craig, we've seen Kansas State spread the field a lot on third down to try to take advantage of some open zones. You see them doing it again. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Eight third down attempt of the night for the Wildcats. Kaufman has time, completes his pass. He's got Chris Harper. The Oregon transfer moves the chains, and this is the third consecutive drive that the Wildcats have gotten the ball in Nebraska territory, still looking for their first score of the night. Corner blitz, Carson Kaufman, the senior, feels it to the right, and Thomas does a beautiful job of pulling up and taking his responsibility. But it's being on the same page with wide receiver Chris Harper, who is a transfer, used to play at Oregon. In a short amount of time, he's on the same page with his 
his quarterback Carson Kaufman to beat the corner blitz. Thomas. Daniel will plow his way just inside the 35 as we check in with John Saunders. Well, Reese, it's time now for the Sports Center right now, brought to you by Keystone Light. Texas wins 6 0 over Tampa Bay. Michael Young's three run shot doing most of the damage. So now the Rangers lead the series with the Rays 2 0 headed back to Texas. Meanwhile, the Yankees trying to go up 2 0 on the Twins with a 4 2 lead. Reese. All right, John and Braves and the Giants later on tonight. Back here, Kansas State goes back to their star, Daniel Thomas. Thomas twisting and turning and gets inside the 30-yard line. It'll be another third down for Kansas State. It's been a big difference so far watching Daniel Thomas run against six-man boxes as opposed to eight and nine-man boxes like he's used to doing. But you see how quickly it becomes a seven-man box when that inside receiver who's covered, the man over him comes hard, fast, to support run, it makes it seven. They've brought the weak corner a couple times as well from the shortstop. They're doing it again. Adama Kamara. <laughs> See if he's bluffing you. Option look to pitch to Thomas. A terrific play by Levante David, who is just having a spectacular night. That is already his tenth tackle. This is a junior college transfer that walked on this campus and has immediately showed how you go attack a great football player and lead by example. Well, look at the speed by Levante David. He beats Daniel Thomas out to the side of the field. He already has 10 tackles and a sack. Whoa. He leads the Big 12, and I dare say he's going to at the end of the weekend, too. <laughs> This is Josh Cherry. He's going to try one from 46 yards out. Career long of 47, and that one's good. So the Wildcats get stopped on third down, but Cherry picks it up with the long field goal, and the Wildcats are on the board and in the hunt. Back here, Kansas State. Thank you, Duck. Here is tonight's Athletic Trivia question. Bill Snyder, one of three coaches to coach in a stadium named after him at the time. Who are the other two legendary coaches? Bill Snyder has a stadium, a highway. He is revered in these parts for bringing pride and the Big 12 championship in 2003 to Kansas State in just a double overtime loss in the Big 12 championship game in 1998 away from playing for a national championship. You see the three time national coach of the year Barry Switzer once called him the coach of the century winning as much as he has at Kansas State to kick off after the field goal and Niles Paul is going to bring it out of the end zone and Niles would have been better served to take a knee. He stopped inside the 15-yard line. The first man to deliver the hit was Charles Melton, number 41. We're talking about Snyder and the terrific job he's done in two tours of duty as a Kansas State head coach. Look at the record. In 1935 forward, Bill Snyder has almost equaled the number of victories Kansas State had under 15 previous coaches and the number of losses astounding. More than 400 attributed to the other 15 guys. Only 74. Snyder has built this program and then picked it up and rebuilt it, coming back here this now in his second season returning. Huskers pinned in their own end. Halu got room. Roy Halu still on his feet. Roy will pick up the first down. Well, we met yesterday with Coach Snyder in his office. And I think we all came out of there feeling like we'd visited with our grandfather. You know, it, it, we talked some football, I think, <laughs> but it was a lot about life. And the players here love playing for him. He's really a man of principle, wears a suit and tie every day that he's around. And he believes in family. He instills that in his recruiting practices. Remarkable man. Clock's getting deep. Snyder's team has this crowd into it. Martinez flag is flying as Taylor turns the corner. Martinez into the open field and he'll dance out of bounds at the 40-yard line. We'll check and see 
what the penalty is that came down on the far side just around the line of scrimmage. They got Kansas State in the neutral zone so this run from Taylor Martinez could well stand up and that is going to be the call. Offside defense number 46. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. 16 yard pickup is Snyder's team picks up its first penalty of the night. They don't get penalized very much. Very disciplined squad. Yeah, they're, they're giving up a little less than five penalties per game. But, you know, that was one of the, the few head coaches' offices I've ever been in. There were no paraphernalia of football. There were pictures of his eight children, five grandchildren, a lot of family. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Martinez. And he stopped after a short, short game so uh, more on Pinocchio now let's check in with Jen Brown guys if you remember he had that statue of Pinocchio on his desk and the other thing that I thought was interesting is in the electronic picture frames with all of his family he had the picture of Pinocchio well I talked to some of the guys about that they said it's his favorite character if you ask him what his favorite book is it's Pinocchio if you ask him what his favorite movie is it's Pinocchio he says he just really likes the story and the message that it sends uh, Jen, he said that Geppetto, of course, who made Pinocchio, had real compassion for children when things went wrong. He, he stuck with them until they turned back around. Martinez, complete to McNeil, a very short gain, and the Huskers will be looking at a third down. Alex Reback on the stop along with Terrence Sweeney. I like the style Kansas State's figuring out defensively now. Be soft, like on the previous series, third and eight, sit back, keep them in front of you. Otherwise, if you don't, if you don't do that, Martinez will run right past you. It's okay to bring pressure, but you better inside stay in your lane. Wildcats did bring Stephen Harrison off the corner on the last play on third and six. Let's see if they try to put some heat on the freshman here. Here they come. Flags fly, but Kansas State might have moved a little early again. It won't be enough for the first down, the five yard penalty, but it will bring them within a yard. Assuming that it was Kansas State they caught and they weren't drawn off. Offside, defense, defensive tackle, five yard penalty, third down. It's going to be Brandon Harold, big time defensive end that's playing inside on this play. Brandon Harold leads all defensive linemen in the Big 12 with tackles heading into this game, just getting a little bit anxious off the line. That was actually looked like it was Prezel Brown. Yeah, it was. I think Prezel for the second time has been. Caught jumping into the neutral zone. More manageable for the Huskers. Burkhead trying to move the chains. He lowers his head. Continues to drive behind that offensive line, and the Huskers will pick it up. Craig, to go back to what you were just talking about, this Kansas State defense is going to be soft. They have a bend, don't break mentality. So Nebraska's offensive coordinator, Sean Watson, told us they have to be patient. And Taylor Martinez, as a quarterback, has to be patient. Two weeks ago against South Dakota State, he was not. Threw two interceptions, was handing the football off when he shouldn't have, was not handing it off when he should have in the zone read scheme, tried to do too much. Taylor Martinez cannot press tonight against the defense that it's tough to find big plays against. On first down. Martinez does keep it and he is stopped right at the line of sprint right at the line of scrimmage and Martinez's zone read has been a dangerous weapon for him. Yeah, it has this is a dangerous play But you know what that time there wasn't an option anywhere for him to go whether you handed it or not And so when you look at the game against South Dakota State and the eight carries and only 31 yards It just they, they just he wasn't mentally there, and he started trying to push it, as they, the coaches said. Things started snowballing on him. He tried to do too much and carry the football too often, and it backfired in his face. Carried it eight times tonight for 45 yards. Martinez to throw it. Niles Paul with the catch around the 30-yard line. It'll be a first down, Nebraska. <laughs> A 17-yard pickup. Now the Huskers are going to try to pick up the pace. They're going to 
and flags flying and see if the freshman allowed everyone to get set. Full start. Offense. Number 22. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, Rex Burkhead caught in the backfield for the false start. All right, now that soft, don't bend defense. Now here, this time, Taylor Martinez takes advantage of the time to throw the ball. No pressure on him in the in the pocket. Delivers a strike. But it's amazing to me how many times this year we've seen teams on offense try to go super tempo, and they don't get lined up properly. They end up taking a penalty, set themselves up in a big first and 15. Martinez on the run. Martinez headed to the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. A 35-yard touchdown run, the ninth run of 20 yards or more this season for the explosive freshman. Watch the end line of scrimmage where the read takes place. Defensive end's going to come out and try to take out here, but the speed to get by, no inside traffic, you can't do that. Martinez is phenomenal with foot speed, and an inch gives him 40. An inch is exactly what Bo Pelini has said about this guy. If you're wrong by an inch, he'll make you pay. And Kansas State was just wrong enough. Martinez into the end zone for the second time tonight. Huskers up by 11. Well, the children of the corn have gotten another taste of tea magic. Taylor Martinez has had two running touchdowns tonight, the latest in electrifying fashion. All right, let's watch the surge and the push that takes place, and then the guard comes around on an island out here in no man's land. You cannot be on an island against Taylor Martinez. He'll run past it. And another reason this play is able to work, look downfield at the blocking by the wide receivers. Niles Paul able to lock up with the cornerback Gives Martinez a chance to get through with that speed. And that is not what Bill Snyder wanted for his 71st birthday. He wants Taylor Martinez getting loose to finish off an eight play, 87 yard drive. And Martinez, among the nation's scoring leader, now with his 10th rushing touchdown, that's the best in the country. Nolik drives it into the end zone. William Powell's going to run it out. Powell. Across the 35 and a good kickoff return before Justin Blatchford makes the stop for Nebraska. Let's check in with John Saunders now back in the studio. Well, Reese, we just want to let you know what's coming up on the IBM halftime report. We're calling it Who Are You Saturday? We'll find out who's good, who's not. The Rays get rocked once again, and Dr. Lou gets a visit from a former baseball great. You want to tune in to find out on the IBM halftime report. Reese. All right, John, we're about to find out who Kansas State is right now. And a bit of dire situation. Down 14-3, not many explosive plays. Need to put a drive together. You know, Nebraska has been a great road team under Bo Pelini. They've won their last five road contests. And one of the reasons why, they score quickly. They get up on you early, and they're able to deflate the home crowd. I'm feeling a little bit of that right now. Under Bo, Nebraska 7-3. Road games. Coffin. Thomas with another catch. Daniel avoids the first tackler and hits it out close to the 40 yard line. He's still going to be about six yards short of the first down. Okay, so you get up on an opponent and you've got a defense with a newcomer, Levante David, and the boy that guy plays with his motor. That's, hey, a lot of folks in this country are just now finding out about David tonight. Didn't even know it. And we've all thought he would, this was a great team, perhaps. Now, all of a sudden, David's out there doing what he's doing. Flags flying on the third down play. False start. Center. Number 74. Five-yard penalty. Third down. You know, Craig, you could argue that the linebacker position has been the weakest link on this Nebraska defense. They had two projected starters go down in summer camp in Sean Fisher and Will Compton. They had a lot of inexperience in that linebacker spot, but Levante David with his speed, his leadership, he's making up for that inexperience right now. Yeah. 
Fisher's done for the season. They hope to get Compton back in the next few weeks. And third down, Kaufman, a lot of pressure back there, throws it incomplete. And with just over two minutes to go in the first half, now Kansas State's going to have to punt it. Nebraska will get a possession here, and they get the first possession of the second half. So the Wildcat defensive pressure is going to be on. They, they have to keep Nebraska from scoring on this drive. This is the first time tonight that the Black Shirts have been able to force the Wildcats on a three and out. Ryan Doerr will punt it away. Isles Paul to return it. Paul will make the fair catch on the 16 yard line. Now it's time for the answer to tonight's Affleck trivia question. Affleck. Thank you, Duck. Bill Snyder, one of the three coaches to coach in a stadium named after him at the time. Who are the other two legendary coaches? The answers are Ralph Shug Jordan at Auburn, Jordan Hare Stadium, and Paul Bear Bryant at Alabama at Bryant Denny Stadium. Did it stump you this morning? And aren't you from Alabama? We were in a meeting this morning, <laughs> and normally, Reese, you are all over these questions. Oh. And you sat there, it was like paralysis through analysis. You were just you were sitting there, you were thinking so, so hard. I was, I'll tell you what I was thinking. I was thinking, did they name Wallace Wade Stadium at Duke for him before he left? And then they put up the answer, and I was like, come on, man. Reese went to Bama and your wife went to Auburn? Come on, man. They're going to revoke my citizenship. Taylor Martinez, he may be going to the end zone. Martinez with another big run, and Nebraska has a scoring opportunity. It's sensational freshman, over 100 yards rushing. Kansas State's defense in the receiving mode. Brees, they didn't answer the bell like you talked about. Watch the quarterback design draw up in the hole and not going and attacking at the point of football. He's averaging 9.4 yards per carry for a reason. They're multiple with him. They run him inside. They run him on the speed option outside. Zone read off tackle. You have to keep your eyes on him or he will kill you. Hello. Boy, oh, picks up two or three. In our conference call with the coaches at Nebraska, Sean Watson, we talked, but he and Bo, it seemed like 30 minutes, and we finally said, hey, can we talk about someone else besides Taylor Martinez? <laughs> and this is a great situation, like Reese, you pointed out earlier. Time winding down, under a minute, 20 seconds. You got a timeout, but you're going to bleed this clock. Try to have the last possession before getting it back first in the second half. Martinez trying to get the corner and this time the Wildcats are there. David Garrett makes the stop. The timeout is called immediately by the Huskers. Martinez losing five. And it'll bring up third down. Don't forget Saturday afternoon three college football games will be available regionally on ABC or ESPN. Denard Robinson speaking of electric running quarterbacks in Michigan taking on in-state rival Michigan State and fine linebacker Greg Jones. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ABC or ESPN, 3.30 Eastern time. Some of you may see Arkansas and Texas A&M, a couple of big arm quarterbacks there, or Clemson and North Carolina. Go back to Martinez. I, in listening to this football team talk about all of their weapons on offense, I had this concern that this maybe was a team where you try to spread it around and can't identify your guy. You know, you got receivers out there. You got a couple of different runners. You got a tight end. You know, I think their I think their guy is a freshman, and he's number three. And I've been impressed with his poise so far in this first half. Not trying to press. Not trying to do too much. This is about as good a bounce back performance as you can have after a horrific game against South Dakota State. He handled the hostile atmosphere at Washington beautifully when the Huskers put up 56, and he's doing pretty well against another purple crowd tonight. Third down, Palou into the secondary. Boy, he'll get it down to the 22 or so. He'll be about three yards short of the first down. And then, oh, by the way, here's nearly a 1,200-yard rusher from last year coming at you, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very good, balanced offense. Guys, if you're Kansas State, why are you not trying to call a timeout so you, if they do make this field goal or miss, you can get it back with the time to go march down the field and get your own points? Alex Henry is money inside the 40 for his career. 36 of 37 is a timeout is called. And this one just a shade inside 40 and 39 yards out. 
Well, Taylor Martinez has certainly been the story of the first half. And, and I thought early on, a couple of the pass completions really helped them out. But immediately, you saw that the explosiveness that the coaches kept talking about and why he won the quarterbacking job over Zach Lee and Cody Green, all of a sudden, bang, it's an explosive play. It happens, and there's nothing you can do about it. Taylor Martinez right now is on pace to break the Nebraska record for rushing yards by a freshman. Amon Green set that back in 1995. You see Taylor Martinez quickly climbing the charts. He's been electric. And, and look at all those eye backs in there. And then yeah. you have Taylor Martinez right in the middle of it. And his fifth 40 yard run of the season tonight, 40 plus. That's in the nation's lead as Alex Henry reaches from 39 yards out. He only missed once from inside the 40 in his career, and he's not going to do it there as Nebraska makes it a two touchdown cushion. 26 seconds to go in the first half. Saturday night, ESPN delivers an SEC showdown. Number 12, LSU going on the road in the swamp. Take on the Gators. Florida trying to bounce back after its loss to Alabama. LSU trying to bounce back after its win over Tennessee. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN Saturday at 7.30. It's available online and on your phone. Uh, LSU, have you ever seen an undefeated team be more maligned than the Tigers have been so far? They have a lot of issues, particularly a quarterback. And we're going to see both Jordan Jefferson, Jared Lee in this game against the Gator defense that leads the SEC with 12 interceptions. On the flip side, John Brantley got real beat up after that lost Alabama. He's got sore ribs. LSU has the best total defense in the SEC. We did their spring game. I asked Les Miles and said, hey, it was safe to say that if you had a quarterback, you'd be a really good team. And he said, yes, I think he's still looking for that guy. Zadi Kanalik hammers another kickoff into the end zone. And there's a flag down on the play already. As Powell brings it out. We'll get it to about the 20-yard line. I believe there's going to be an offside penalty. Randy Crystal, our referee tonight. This Big 12 crew working in Manhattan. Offside, kicking team, number 46. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. So 17 to three, Kansas State is trailing Nebraska right now. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jen Brown down on the field. So we've got 22 seconds here. You don't want anything bad to happen. Would you be aggressive in this final 22 seconds for Kansas State? No, <laughs> no, no. I think this is this is a the coach that's smart, and you know what's happened here. He's got to go in and figure out a way to to get someone who can find a way to get a hat on Martinez. The guy's just too much for Kansas State. We're seeing what makes Nebraska so difficult to score against. They come into this game the seventh best scoring defense in the country, allowing less than 13 points a game. They force you to go 12. 14 plays a drive just to get points. It's really tough. You will not find explosive plays against this unit. And to compound the problem, they got a quarterback and two eye backs. They can take it the distance every time they have the ball. And, and you know, as we go around and talk to coaches in the games we do on Thursday nights and other ones on Saturday, you hear so many coaches putting a premium on explosive plays. Kansas State's longest play from scrimmage tonight is 17 yards, and it's uh, very tough to go against a good defense when you can't get yardage in chunks. William Powell trying to get a big chunk on a kickoff return. He gets out to the 34-yard line, stopped by Graham Stoddard. And, and I'll tell you the other thing that Bill Snyder's got to figure out in the locker room is how they get a hat on Levante David, number four. He's made. 80% of the tackles over there. He's running around like nobody's out there attempting to block him. Craig, you're right. Unless Kansas State is able to force an extra safety into the box, they won't have an opportunity to get big plays throwing the football. They're still having issues right now running it against that weakened box. It's tough sledding. Got a good look at David, who's a junior college transfer. He played high school ball at Miami Northwestern, a teammate of Ja'Cory Harris. Kaufman is going to throw it, and trying to deal with Prince and Camara is a very difficult route to go indeed and the guy who many believe is the best cover man in college football makes the play. Well, Mr. Hare Mer Mel Kuyper has him as the fifth best in the country overall. Overall all positions. All positions. I mean it, that says a lot. If Mel likes you that high you, you can obviously play the game. 
Well, he's long, he's got long arms, he's got different techniques and styles of covering receivers. He can confuse them. He's a total package, plays the run well, does everything. 10 seconds. Coffin going to take a chance, lays one up. And my Camara interception. There is a flag down on the play. Looking across the way for the hat to see if not less miles, but the official's actual hat. You can see if the receiver ran out of bounds. I'm a Camara. Picked that one off easily. They're trying to run a double move down the sideline to see if Amu Kamara would look back in the backfield and bite on it. But again, he's a veteran. He's wily. Stayed with the receiver all the way down the field. Pass interference. Defense. Number 21. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. One of the things that makes Amakamara so good is he changes his looks at the line of scrimmage against receivers. One time he'll get up in their face, he'll press them, get his hands on them, he'll get up there the next time, make it look like he's going to do that, and then bail out. So very hard for receivers to get a feel for how to play against a really talented corner. Well, Snyder, knowing that Nebraska is going to have it first in the second half, has tried to take a couple of shots, and now. 51 yards away from the end zone. He'll at least give Kaufman an opportunity, one would think, to throw it as far as he can. The pass interference on Amu Kamara. Giving the Wildcats at least a decent shot at a Hail Mary just before the half. Kaufman going to load it up and throw it as far as he can. And that'll be intercepted. Eric Haig, the Peso back, a hybrid of a defensive back and a linebacker makes the grab. 17-3 at the half. Let's check in with Jen Brown. Coach Taylor Martinez has rushed for 129 yards and has two touchdowns. How do you contain him in the second half? Well, we'd have to do it a lot better than we did in the first half. I'm quite certain about that. I think it's just a matter of assignment football, being where we're supposed to be and not running off with the fakes that he makes. But he's a good athlete, and they're blocking well for him, too. Now, you've been in Nebraska territory three times. You have only come away with three points. How do you get more production out of your offense in the second half? Well, I, I think we've got to be a little bit more balanced, and we've got to complete some passes when we throw them. And we've just got to block better at the line of scrimmage. Okay, thanks, Coach Reese. All right, Jen, so the Wildcats go into the locker room in front of a crowd hoping for an upset tonight. Their team down 17 to 3. Taylor Martinez has indeed been a team magic. Let's join John Saunders now for the IBM halftime report. Welcome back to College Football Primetime on ESPN, served by Applebee's. Just about to start the second half in Bill Snyder Family Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, Nebraska, number seven in the land, up 17 to three at the brink. An impressive display in the first half by the freshman quarterback, Taylor Martinez. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jen Brown with you. So Nebraska's in control right now, Craig. What do they need to do to maintain that focus in the second half? I think they have to be real about it. Bo Pelini and that football team's wise enough to understand that there are a lot of voters watching this game. They want to see how well Nebraska plays for 60 minutes. If I'm quarterback Taylor Martinez, I'm trying to keep my focus and be patient. I've made all the right decisions throwing the football so far. I'm four for four. I've made all the right decisions in the run game. I've handed it off when I'm supposed to. I've kept the football when I'm supposed to in the zone reads game. Because of that, my offense right now is almost 200 yards rushing. Martinez has well over 100 of that by himself, and he'll get the first opportunity. We kick it off to start the second half. Anthony Cantelli will kick it off for the Wildcats. Miles Ball and Brandon Kenny to return from Nebraska. It'll be Paul. And he's knocked down at about the 20. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. If I'm Kansas State defensively, I'm making the conscious decision that Taylor Martinez will not beat me in the second half on the ground. I'm going to make him hand the football off on every zone read scheme. I'm bringing an extra guy in the box. He can beat me throwing it if he wants. Well, you must have recruited some other players then. <laughs> I'd find a way to how to block David. Lamani David it was all over the field attacking. He was bringing it down the hill, which is what this staff looked for from their linebackers. This inexperienced group really played well.
And on the first play, Martinez either turned the wrong way or the back went the wrong way as we check in with Jen Brown. Guys, you were talking about Levante David before the half, and I had a chance to talk to Coach Bo Pelini coming out, and I asked him what he thought about his production. He said the defense, he's extremely happy with them. He said De uh, Brown has done amazing things. He's explosive and made all the right calls. Now, Jesse, you talked about uh, Martinez making all the right plays. He says he's missed some calls tonight. So, you know, you think he'd be happy with 129 rushing yards. He says he needs to improve on some calls. Have to get the communication better on that first play from scrimmage. Martinez taking a shot deep down the field. And Paul couldn't reel it in. This is what I'm talking about if you're K-State defensively. I love this. On the first play, you put eight guys in the box and you stuff the run. On the second play, look, they want to get a big play receiver. Niles Paul on the outside running down the sideline. Force the freshman quarterback to make a big throw on the road. He's been killing us with his legs. Well, they have figured out at halftime that what they were doing wasn't working. And Snyder's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He will change his look and try something different in the second half. Late clock. Martinez gets it off. Taylor Martinez first down. Taylor Martinez is gone. Whoa. That'll silence the revved up crowd. 80 yards on the touchdown run, his second 80 yarder of the season. Watch the offensive line come out and fit on linebackers. Only three are going to rush here. Three come. The linebackers are waiting. They're going to contain so much for containment when the offensive line sucks you up and then this breeze goes right by you. <laughs> Blinding <laughs> speed by the redshirt freshman. Three plays, 80 yards, all 80 coming on the fleet feet of Taylor Martinez, who has all three touchdowns tonight and number seven's in control. Streets of Manhattan, Kansas, pretty quiet. Sort of like Bill Snyder Family Stadium after Taylor Martinez just went 80. And Kansas State defensively decided only to rush three players and that allows a lot of white helmets to get into the second level to get a hat on someone. You look in this area of the field right here, seven white helmets able to get downfield. That splits it open for Taylor Martinez. Coaching staff told us that Taylor Martinez is a leader through his actions. He's a quiet, reserved guy. When your football team sitting on the sidelines, defense, special teams, walk-ons, coaches, everybody else, and you see a breeze go down the field like that, you're like, now that is how we can win the Big 12 and play for a national championship. As Kanala kicks it away. Martinez closing in on the Nebraska record for rush yards by quarterback William Powell. Bobbled it. Now he's got a world of trouble, and he's tackled at the 10-yard line. As we go back and check in with John Saunders. Well, Reese, it's time now for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. And for the third time this year, it's Denard Robinson, Michigan quarterback. 10 of 16, 277 yards and three touchdowns. 19 carries, 217 yards and two touchdowns. Tenth time in the regular season that someone's gone as a quarterback. 200 yards passing, 200 yards rushing. And he's the only player to have done it twice. So text the word VOTE to 345-345 for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Reese. All right, John, Daniel Thomas gets a carry. I would say that Martinez will certainly be in the running for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week this week after his spectacular performance well, so far in this one. There are other strong runners playing quarterback this year. Cam Newton, we saw him in person uh, several weeks ago. Yeah, Terrell Pryor used to be kind of the guy but man, Denar's just pushed them all out of the way. You know, you look at those guys, and Newton and Pryor are different types of runners, sort of long striders. Kaepernick is sort of the hybrid. Martinez and Robinson just blinding explosive speed. Hoffman on second down, throws it behind Thomas. 
You know, this Nebraska defense is so well coached up. They understand that when you play a too high safety defense, the soft spot is the middle of the field. And on these pass plays, their defensive backs are shielding their receivers off and not allowing them access into that area of the field. They are students of the game. They watch tape together. They ask a ton of questions. They want to know the weak spots of their coverages. And it shows up every time they take the field. Kaufman's missed his last four passes. Needs one. Throws it low, broken up, and Kansas State's going to go three and out. Black Shirts defense had some folks questioning them whether or not they were going to be as good as they had finished last year. Carl Pelini said he thinks they're as good, if not a little, ahead of last year's pace. So, I mean, tonight it's important for them to play consistent, focused ball, and I think they've done it. That's without Big and Dominic and Sue. Baker Steinkuhler getting more time running the defensive tackle with Frick. The collision on the K-State punter in the backfield and the flag went down. Ricky Tenars was back there trying to get the block. Partial foul. Roughing the kicker number three. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. This is really a, you know, a play by Ricky Tenars on the edge. It looks like he... he you know, I'm not so sure he didn't. I don't think he got blocked into the punter. He definitely got clipped. He wasn't able to catch his balance before taking the punter's leg out. Yeah, I don't think he was blocked into him. Bo, Bo Pelini's arguing that, that he was blocked into him. But I think he, he just ran through the attempted block into the kicker. That's a lucky break for Kansas State because if Nebraska gets the ball back at midfield, this game could get out of hand really fast. They have to capitalize on this possession. Another flag flies. The previous flag, the 15-yard variety, allowing Kansas State to keep it. And Substitution infraction. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. So the quick change after the penalty, apparently. Perhaps too many guys breaking the huddle. I saw Jermaine Thompson coming to the sideline. To Bill Snyder. Perhaps it was him. And Carson Kaufman needs to find a rhythm in the passing game. He needs to do it in a hurry. Daniel Thomas, nothing doing. Just very impressed with the way Nebraska's defensive front is playing downhill. I, 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 I think we all had questions after watching tape whether or not Kansas State's offensive line could deal with them. Well, defensive coordinator Carl Pelini gives this defensive front a lot of freedom. It's a two-gap, so guys can take different gaps depending on what they see. They need their teammates beside them to make up for them whenever they're twisting and stunning and pursuing the football. But that's the reason there's a lot of pressure on this defense up front to stop the run because they will not add another guy in the box. Fly sweep. A little running room. That is Thompson. He'll be stopped short of the 30. It'll bring up third and long. You know, and Carl Pelini told us statistically the defense comes in. They're giving up 139 rushing yards per game, and everybody's wondering what's wrong with this defense. But he said, you know, it's part of the process. It's kind of the, the method to the madness. We're going to get better. He's not obsessed with statistics anyway. As long as they're getting the football back, they're playing the, the, the type of football and defense he wants, they're fine. That linebacker level, these guys right in here, that's what's making Carl Pelini happy the way they're getting down to the run. Bunch of pressure on Kaufman and down he goes. Cameron Meredith was the first one to get him. Pierre Allen was there as well. But Kansas State can't take advantage of the roughing the punter and they'll have to punt it away again. Uh, and you know now all 11 are playing downhill and this Kansas State offensive line is going to have a very hard task in the second half. Kaufman, not a real fast-footed guy. You can't outrun that type of pressure, that many jerseys around you. Door, ball, makes the fair catch. And what kind of magic will T-Magic conjure up this time? Nebraska's up by three touchdowns. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000-mile, five-year powertrain limited warranty. 
and Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Dressed up in their finest purple. Many painted themselves, but it's been Nebraska doing all of the dancing. The music has been right on key for the Cornhuskers tonight, despite the pride band playing for Kansas State. 24 to 3, Nebraska has the lead here in Manhattan, early part of the third quarter. Roy, hello. Hello. Goodbye. Sixty-eight yards, and it is turned into a blowout. Well, we've seen guards pulling and a lot of variety of blocking schemes. This is straight man up blocking, straight ahead blocking by the offensive line, getting in fit on their guys, drive and dominating block. Ricky Henry, the big right guard, just collapses and caves it inside. And that guy that, oh, by the way, had nearly 1,200 yards last year, saying, uh, Mr. Martinez, I can play too. 31 to 3. So let's see. The last two plays from scrimmage for the Huskers have gone 80 and 68. And it's 31 to 3. You know, maybe uh, maybe the NASCAR guys could keep up with Taylor Martinez or Roy Hallou. Strong performance in Kansas. Jimmy Johnson has taken over the chase lead. Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick hot on his heels. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Pepsi Max 400 in California on ESPN Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Points leaders go a little something like this. You see how close Hamlin is as Johnson is trying to win his fifth consecutive points title. Now Nebraska is enjoying its finest run in terms of its ranking since the 2001 season when the Huskers played for the national championship and lost to Miami and right now the seventh ranked team in the country that at least coming into the season the expectations built on defense showing plenty of explosive offensive capability. Powell from his goal line. White shirts all over him, and Kansas State will try to get it going from the 23. Now, obviously, that play, those players are are dejected. But when you look at this conference and what looks like would be the Big 12 championship game of Oklahoma and Nebraska, you've got the makings now of a Taylor Martinez who's replaced the legs. He's the guy like a Colt McCoy was at Texas, right? <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you, 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 and you got Landry Jones who'd be going against him. That's got the more proficient offense. But I'd argue if you've watched Nebraska or Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or Texas, at this point, to me, Nebraska has been the most impressive on offense and on defense up to this point in the season. Colin Klein is in a quarterback for Kansas State. Daniel Thomas. Coming up with a solid gain. He'll move to change on first down. You know, and it's so much of this goes back to consistency and what Bo Pelini is trying to instill in this team. You know, it's not okay for them to go out and smash Washington and then come back the next two weeks, play South Dakota State, and beat them 17 to 3. You know, he's trying to get this team to play at a certain level week in, week out. And this is a nice bounce back for them. This is the caliber that they're capable of every week. Thomas goes to the sideline after his longest carry of the game, 13 yards. Klein showing his running skills. Colin Klein in the Nebraska territory and carrying black shirts with him. They just you, you got to have explosiveness to go against a defense as good as Nebraska and there's only been one guy to this point Daniel Thomas on the field that I thought had that in him now Klein comes in and shows a little bit of running ability and makes you wonder where's that been well the, the, the bad news for K-State this is the worst passing offense in the Big 12 conference so playing catch up throwing the football is not where they want to be and they got nine interceptions in the last three weeks you don't want to throw against that secondary Gonna have to, I think, go down by 28. <laughs> Want to and have to? Do they collide? Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, the sophomore from Loveling, Colorado, was a bit confused. Down by 28, he'll go have a chat with his head coach. 
still a little over a week away from the initial BCS standings. As Little Red could tell you, I'm sure, his team up 31 to 3. Get you ready. We'll unveil those BCS standings every Sunday night, 8:15 Eastern, on ESPN and ESPNU. Following, we'll start with the preview show this Sunday night at 8:15. Craig and I will be involved. The entire college football team as well. It's Daniel Thomas back into the game, pushes his way inside the Nebraska 40. You know, Carson Kaufman, starting quarterback, doesn't, you know, can't feel too bad this performance because this defense makes good quarterbacks look bad. Against Jake Locker, they held him to 4 of 20, intercepted him twice, threw for only 71 yards in that game. I mean, it is tough to have success against these black shirts. Well, and Bo Pelini told us at the Holiday Bowl, he goes, we'll be better than this year, next year. And, and I think his wisdom is proven true on the football field. Klein played a little receiver in his time. He's a good runner. Stopped by Thaddeus Randall, and it'll probably be of little consolation to Kaufman that if he doesn't play anymore tonight, he'll say, well, at least I finished with twice as many completions as Jake Locker. And, and again, looking ahead, and what does this team and this kind of performance mean for the season? It means that Nebraska has all of the ability, offense and defense, especially now with Martinez and having the confidence to make the right decisions with his legs to compete and win it all. Fine on third down won't be anywhere close. And Nebraska has a game that while Bo Pelini has tried to downplay it, the Big Red Nation has been looking forward to the one that's coming up next. It's going to be three big games right in here. Texas at Oklahoma State where they haven't won since 1995. And then against 24 Missouri. This is a team that under Bo Pelini is 14 and 6 before Halloween. They're 10 and 2 after Halloween. This is a big stretch of games coming up. Kansas State, despite being in Nebraska territory, likes to punt it away on fourth down. They'll try to pin the Huskers deep. Not that that's mattered on the last couple of plays. Well, the reason the Cornhuskers are so eager to see the Burnt Orange Nation come rolling into Memorial Stadium last year, Big 12 championship game, and Dominican Sue was all over Colt McCoy. In fact, the Huskers thought the time had expired. Mac Brown lobbied. Officials looked. Bo Pelini chagrin. One second added to the clock, and Hunter Lawrence lifted the horns to a Big 12 title and a spot in the national championship game with a 46-yarder. They gave Texas a 13-12 lead. And in the offseason, there was a promotion at Nebraska in which they were urging their fans to be loud, wear red, and the third line was beat Texas. Uh, Pelini, uh, Pelini sort of got on top of that when they took the beat Texas out of it until they reached the stage of the season. But I would imagine as soon as the clock hits zero tonight, it'll be okay to go ahead and start aiming for the Longhorns. And I bet there are a few helmets over there right now that's already inside their head. I mean, and, and guaranteed back in Lincoln, they're thinking about it already. And Mac Brown's offense, they better, they better figure out something in a hurry before next week. Texas is in fear of losing a third straight regular season game for the first time in the Mac Brown era at Texas. They, they, they better get ready. Lex Burkhead, ball came out. Still a scramble for it. And Martinez got on top of it again. Another charm bounce from Nebraska on a fumble. And I'll tell you what happens here. When you're doing these reads and you're handing that ball in there and you're riding that back, it, it happens so long. The ball stays in there so long in the belly and you're in there looking at it and the back really is like, okay, do I have it? Do I not have it? you got to squeeze it and get it under the arm. And again, and that's really the threat on offense when you have a lot of zone read and you have a lot of option. When the football's changing hands so often on a given play, there's a lot of chances for that football to end up on the ground because you're playing on the move. It's something Nebraska's going to have to clean up down the stretch. Martinez has to hurry. I don't think he got it off. You get a five-yard delay of game penalty. Delay. Offense, five-yard penalty. Third down. There's a lot of coaches on the Nebraska sidelines screaming and yelling at the freshman quarterback right now. They do not want them to become complacent, keep the foot down, get these plays going. Yeah, you're up 31 to 3, but to be a good finisher, you got to play well now in the second half. Well, like on Mondays at practice regarding these fumbles, they have fundamental Monday. 
And they go out there and they do a, 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 an entire drill for all ball carriers, ball handlers, stripping, gauntlet from behind. I mean, they're trying to get the football to stay in the hands of these, of these ball carriers. And another penalty on Nebraska is Jeremiah Searles, the freshman left tackle, Full came start. out of his stance. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty, third down. A little competition going over there at left tackle between Searles and Yoshi Hardrick, his backup. There's, there, you know, the competition on the offensive line across the board really is pushing everybody to make them better. Both of those guys, youngsters. Nebraska did lose Mike Smith, who well might have started at left tackle. Burkhead gets across the five and bring up a fourth down. The punting unit will come on for the Huskers. Mike Smith. Suffered a broken leg. He'd started the last two years on the offensive line. So the Huskers have, have been able to develop some depth up there. It's worked well. Obviously, they're fourth in the nation in rushing, and the nearly 350 yards they put up tonight is not going to hurt that number. And they get Marcel Jones back tonight. Henry Thompson will make a fair catch just outside his own 40. Saturday Night Football continues on ABC. One of the great rivalries in college football is Christian Ponder leads number 23 Florida State against 13th ranked Miami and Ja'Cory Harris. Some on the West Coast will see USC and Stanford. Stanford tries to bounce back from that loss to Oregon. Nine straight meetings between the Knowles and the Canes decided by fewer than 10 points. Ja'Cory Harris has to be very smart with the football now. He's thrown eight interceptions in his last three games. This Florida State defense will be looking to make some big plays. It's the Florida State offensive line, I think, the difference in their football team this year, giving Ponder a chance. Carson Kaufman returns at quarterback to Kansas State after Klein got a series. Kaufman's pass is quick to Daniel Thomas, who couldn't stay on his feet. And, and Mark Stoops, what he's done on defense as the coordinator at Florida State. They're, ju they're just playing a lot better. I think the edge goes to Miami because they're playing in Miami, and that's where, at home, Harris doesn't throw as many interceptions. But, you know, and going back to Mark Stoops, he's brought the pass rush back to Florida State defense. They lead the country now in sacks. That's something we were always used to seeing. Yeah. We've kind of gotten away from that the last couple of years. There'll be a lot of heat coming at you, Corey Harris. I had a chance to watch film with Mark uh, about a week or so ago. Boy, he's really got a great scheme and plan for bracketing receivers, et cetera. Klein is returned at quarterback, and Klein picks up the first down. So one play for Carson Kaufman. Klein right back into the lineup. On his zone read, he picks up the first. Reese, don't you think it's good, though? The ACC finally has a couple of headliners out there that, that you know, Florida State, Miami, they can start talking with pride about perhaps good teams there. You know, since the ACC expanded, that's been the championship game that people anticipated. That's yet to materialize. It looks right now as if this could be the first of a couple of meetings between the Seminoles and the Hurricanes. But you mentioned the home to Corey Harris has to take better care of the ball. Lines pass, complete the quarrels. He's knocked out of bounds. The official is going to spot him, I believe, at the 35. And if so, that'll be enough for the first down. But Harris, with his experience and talent for Miami, the eight interceptions in the early going. I mean, they blamed a lot of them on the receivers, but still, you have to take better care of the ball if you're going to compete for championships. Well, and it's something that's really been the Achilles heel for the Miami Hurricanes for the last couple of years. They threw 17 last season, second most in the nation. You know, they're a great team, but they just stay out of their own way. Option. Klein pitched it awfully hard. Thomas couldn't handle it. It's still on the ground. And Kansas State able to jump back on it. Travis Tannehill, the tight end, I believe, number 80. He is indeed the man who got it. Jesse, what number were you in football? Seven? I was seven. Did you ever pitch a ball this hard? The very first snap I ever took in spring <laughs> football, I turned around and I pitched it right off Fred Taylor's face because I was so nervous. You know, that's an example of a new quarterback in with a running back. The, the timing's not yeah. necessarily there. It's not on just the quarterback. I'm not trying to bust on him. I'm, I apologize, Kyle. I just was saying that was a pretty firm. Another game on Saturday night kind of excited about is uh, USC up at Stanford. Yeah. Get a chance to go announce that one. I can't wait to see Stanford in person. Very powerful 
football team and USC if they can recover from their loss to Washington it's going to be a lot of, a lot of pride on the line for the Trojans they better show up Kansas State has failed in its last five third down opportunities line complete to Thomas Thomas hit immediately and stopped by Levante David you know you can see going against this Nebraska defense just how hard it is to get a minimal gain in the passing game when you got receivers running double moves slanting back and forth trying to run away from these white helmets quarterbacks trying to buy time just to get a five yard gain is a lot of work did you see how fast David sucked Thomas back up there was a three yard cushion catches the ball he was back in his pocket immediately so much speed on that side Josh Cherry's going to try to put through a 48 yard field goal and Cherry has a new career long. Wouldn't exactly describe it as a cherry on top of a Kansas State Sunday, but he has provided all the points. Meanwhile, Taylor Martinez has just been spectacular on the night. Over 200 yards rushing for the Nebraska quarterback. He has two more runs of longer than 40 yards. And Kansas State has just spent much of the night checking out his heels. I, I remember writing notes to myself here in this game. Uh, there needs to be a big passing game, big explosive passes by Martinez. And they got, you know, did him again. I'd probably say, well, just get him to the corner and see what he can do. Look at the number of yards he's been able to put together the huge game against Washington in which in that game he also threw for 150 yards and a touchdown and then tonight his speed he just put everybody in the Kansas State defense in slow motion for the first time in a couple years the quarterback position is the focal point of the Nebraska offense he is the centerpiece and if he plays like this you can't stop these guys Nebraska will start on his 20 as we check in with John Saunders. Race in the Sports Center right now brought to you by Keystone Light. As we told you earlier, Texas beats the race 6 0. Michael Young, that's a three run shot. They now lead the series with the race 2 0, headed back home. Also tonight, the New York Yankees beat the Twins for the eighth straight time in the postseason, and they now take a two game to nothing lead. And the Braves and the Giants just underway on the West Coast. You can hear that on ESPN Radio with Chris Berman. Reese, back to you. All right, John, so playoffs in full swing. Rex Burkhead. Breaks the tackle and has a short run. Martinez still in a quarterback here late in the third. You know, to your, to your point about this is a quarterback offense right now, no question about that. Now, Bo Pelini's challenge is coming into a big game, Texas, staying focused, keeping his young guy focused, because it's going to be all kinds of praise going Martinez's way this week. A lot of people thought this Nebraska team was looking beyond South Dakota State to get ready for tonight's game against K-State. They had a bad game two weeks ago. They've learned from that. I'll expect them to be up and ready to go next week. Martinez to throw got a man wide open it's complete and running in the open field is Kyler Reed another huge play for Nebraska 89 yards on this one 79 check that 79 yards on the touchdown it's worth six points either way 79 89 69 <laughs> okay back to my notes I do like that note about a big explosive play through the air one into the other any way you slice it <laughs> again but watch I mean an awkward throwing motion kind of over the top the old iron mic in the uh, pitching machine but under thrown, but that's that's going to happen this year with all the defenses having the pressure to get up on the running game. Well, and that safety was flat-footed, looking in the backfield, waiting for Taylor to Martinez to take off. Receiver runs right by him. Extra point is good, and for the fifth time tonight, Nebraska goes at least 68 yards for a touchdown in the last three times. All three times in this half, they've done it in quick strike fashion. Go back and look at this touchdown. Here's the free safety at the top of the screen. You're going to see his eyes looking deep back into the backfield, trying to watch what's happening. Wide receiver at the top, Kyler Reed, just runs right by him. 
And that's just pitch and catch, but that's what happens when you've only attempted five passing attempts up to that play. Everyone on defense so preoccupied with shutting down the run game it finally allows those receivers to run right by. You know, I ran into Terry Donahue at halftime, former UCLA coach, and uh, he was marveling at Martinez and said, wow, how fast that guy is. And then he also said, and a couple of the passes he threw in the first half, he's got really good arm strength. Obviously still developing some of the finer points playing quarterback. 79-yard touchdown pass will certainly aid that cause. Powell turning the kickoff. Powell still on his feet. Or he is knocked down at the 35-38-6 as we check out the storylines. Oregon moving up in the polls as Boise State slips. Well, with my AP ballot, I took him from five up to number two. I move Boise State up to five. TCU dropped down one. Notre Dame, Penn State, Texas, USC. First time all four not in the AP poll since November of 1960. And then, of course, have the clash in the big house, Michigan State and Michigan, as the Spartans try to slow down Bernard Robinson. Kaufman over the middle, and that's an outstanding grab by Aubrey Corum. How about the job Don Treadwell has done as interim head coach at Michigan State two weeks with the absence of Mark D'Antonio? You know, it's one thing, you know, to be out there calling plays, but managing the action when the bullets are flying live. He's done an unbelievable job in that position to get Michigan State to 5 0. Oh. Nebraska's on its way to 5 0. Oh. And the state had hoped it would wind up there. Quarles another catch. He was close to the first now. Uh, everybody's looking at that ball game, wondering how Michigan's defense will stop Michigan State's offense. I don't think they will. I think that's a given. I think it's a shootout kind of game. But Michigan State, after watching them last Saturday against Wisconsin, well-rounded. Kirk Cousins extremely good. Playmakers all over the field. And I think Greg Jones in that linebacker core might be able to keep up with Denard Robinson. Thomas, he's knocked out of bounds. Short game on first down. David with another stop. Oh, what a night Levante David, the junior college transfer, has had from his linebacker position for Bocalini's defense. Seriously, you, you think most people in the country had never even heard of David? Well, they know him now, and if they didn't know T-Magic, they know him now. An explosive <laughs> third quarter for Nebraska, fourth quarter coming from Manhattan. ready to start here in Manhattan where all the people at K-State in town have certainly rolled out the red carpet for us. You know, I always dreamed of having my name on the marquee at a gas station. Yeah. <laughs> Convenience store, right? <laughs> I've been told we're full of it quite a bit, but... <laughs> Fourth quarter underway. Second and 12. Kaufman, a short completion to Daniel Thomas. K-State's gone back, put Carson Kaufman back in the football game, try to build some of that confidence here to move forward. You look down the, the, the road at the schedule for Kansas State, still a lot to play for. There's some big games coming up in division, in conference. That's a good point. He needs to develop. That's a good point. I mean, because they do. they got a season in front of them. on third down taking a shot got a man out there and he missed him that was Aubrey Quarles who was open it'll bring up a fourth down and illuminate the point you guys were talking about Kansas State's about to go to four and one barring an absolute miracle they have a game coming up against Kansas and the Jayhawks under Turner Gill certainly have been struggling and they got a gauntlet right there Oklahoma State Texas Missouri back to back to back but they beat Iowa State and they beat UCLA. They have the ability. They're just playing against a really good team tonight. Miles Paul ends up to make the fair catch. And Nebraska will have it back. 38 already on the board. 21 of them from long distance in the third quarter. Huskers, when you come back. 
Nebraska band quite pleased up 38-6 early in the fourth on Kansas State and the Huskers have been very effective with the zone read. Well they have been this is really though where you got to come in here and you got to see here's backside kind of looking at these guys. But they've executed this zone read scheme perfectly. The offensive line has done a great job up front with the lanes and Taylor Martinez has really been key in terms of who he's keying defensively. He's making the right decisions, handing the football off when he's supposed to, not trying, not trying to do too much. You see the kind of success they can have running the football. It's Burkhead with some success gets across the 31 yard line. You know, it's interesting. This offense is what offensive coordinator Sean Watson had envisioned two years ago. This is what they've wanted to be now for quite some time. Husky's going to pick up the pace. Burkhead turns the corner. And it's across the 40, another first down for Nebraska. This isn't an attempt to run a score up. This is an attempt to execute, to get ready for the pacing they might have against Texas. It's showing the University of Texas another look, something else that Will Muschamp will have to prepare for. Burkhead up close to the 50. That brings up a great point, Craig, because I spoke to Texas defensive coordinator Will Muschamp a few weeks ago, and he said, you know, we're really fast on defense. We're built to stop spread offenses. We feel like we can run sideline to sideline and shut that down. So this will be a very interesting game, looking at this Nebraska offense, the way they run it, against that athleticism from Texas on defense. Yeah, <laughs> they might be athletic and fast, <laughs> but I'm not so sure how many they got over there like Taylor Martinez. A very difficult time. I know it's a little different attack, but stopping that pistol attack at UCLA to the Longhorns. Martinez has batted and knocked down. You know, it's interesting. Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, was very selfish with Taylor Martinez in fall camp. Again, they didn't know if he was going to be a receiver, a free safety quarterback. They knew he was a great athlete and very explosive. But he stayed on all the other coaches said, no, -uh, he's mine. I go back to, again, what we said last year in December. We thought this was a football team that was going to be quarterbacked by Zach Lee or Cody Green. And, and the fact that they brought this guy along like they have is remarkable. Martinez, play clock inside five. Martinez will be sacked. Now, you might wonder. As you see the flags flying at the end and maybe Kansas State's going to hit for some of the rough stuff. Let's see. Maybe Crystal will have the call. Looks like Brandon Harold, the defensive end, may have hit Martinez on top of the head. After the play was over, personal foul, blow to the head, number 91. 15-yard penalty, first down. Here's what happened. Harold has him all wrapped up and he just conked oh. him right on the noggin. It's a Donkey Kong. <laughs> right on top of the head when the plays, and this is just frustration, you yeah. know, from a Kansas State defense. That's, that, it's been run all over all game long. You were going to ask why is he in the game, Martinez? Actually, what I was what I was about to bring up is why are they throwing now? It's, it's a long time, water under the bridge, but you'll recall 2003. Burkhead turning the corner. One of Bill Snyder's outstanding teams, one that actually went on to win the Big 12 championship, knocking off Oklahoma. They went into Nebraska when Frank Solich was the head coach. Bill Snyder was the head coach here at Kansas State, and Bo Pelini was the defensive coordinator at Nebraska. And Pelini and Snyder had some very harsh words at the end of the game. Bo was upset, feeling like that Snyder perhaps had run up the score on him with a late touchdown. Now, Talked to Bo about it this week. He said, hey, you know, water on the bridge, things happen in the heat of the moment. And, you know, hey, look, as Martinez busts into the open. Not they're running it up on purpose, but they'll get two now. Touchdown, Nebraska. Another run of longer than 40 yards. Martinez goes 41. Again, this is your read here. He's looking to the left side. Everybody stays on the left side. You're going to see him back out up here on the, on the left side. 
They stay inside. He takes it right up the pipe. But it's the offensive line getting to the next level, Jesse. They're blocking. Guys, I know we were coming into this game talking about Daniel Thomas making an exclamation point for a Heisman Trophy this year. Is it too late to get Taylor Martinez now no. involved squarely in that conversation? Not at all. As Henry puts through the extra point. I want to finish up what we were talking about, about running up the score. Here's my philosophy on it. If you don't like it, tackle him. And right now, Kansas State has been unable to do that to Taylor Martinez. 241 yards, a new school quarterback rushing rest record. Huskers in a blowout. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. See what's new on Applebee's two for 20 menu. Classics you love and new flavors you'll crave. And in part by G. Little Red has plenty of reasons to dance. 45-6 the score. Four rushing touchdowns for Taylor Martinez. Ties the Nebraska quarterback record. Several guys have that record. It was most recently sent by Eric Prouts, a former Heisman Trophy winner. And the 241 yards he's put up, it's going to be a highlight on Sports Center for sure. It is the eighth best single game rushing performance in Nebraska's long and storied history. Powell's been busy on kickoff returns for Kansas State. And he's got a chance. He'll be dragged down right around midfield. Easily the best return of the night for William Powell, 52 yards. Our weekly adventures, they kind of watching this thing here, you talk about the Special teams, Kansas State will do anything they can to have something positive. Well, and this will be the negative that Bo Pelini takes away from this game. Rest assured, they'll have a lot of harsh words for this kickoff coverage unit in the next week coming up. Carson Kaufman getting into the secondary. Several backups are on the field for Nebraska now. Levante David most certainly a starter, making yet another tackle. Has 16 tackles now for David, who turned in 19 tackles last time out against San Diego State. Well, he leads the conference, averaging 11 tackles a game. He's just a machine. But this is a very, it's an odd defense. You don't see it every week, but they play so well together. Kaufman. Kaufman! Trying to run away from Dejon Gomes, and Kaufman gets inside the five-yard line. It's K-State's best touchdown opportunity of the night. <laughs> well, that time, number four, Levante David got sucked up inside the found him. Coming around the corner there, Kendall, 59, finds number four. And then a nice run there by Kaufman. Well, Nebraska hurrying people onto the field. They've got some starters coming back. They want to try to keep Kansas State out of the end zone if they can. And Nebraska trying to get much of the first unit back on the field. Calls a timeout. 45 to 6, Kansas State on the Corn Husker 1. We'll see if they can get it in when you come back. Nebraska's rolling over K State, 45 to 6. You know, there might have been a reason why Levante David couldn't stop Carson Kaufman. Well, you saw that Kendall comes around. A little cloth there. David couldn't get away quite from him. So, Carpolini, those Polini boys. Hey, look here. Grabbing and holding number 59. <laughs> Don't really blame Zach Kendall. Nothing else has worked. First and goal. Daniel Thomas won't make it in. This Nebraska defense takes these scores personally. Craig, you remember last year in the Holiday Bowl? Remember when Dominican Sue was on the field on a last second red zone stop when they were up 33 to nothing to preserve the goose egg? We kept saying, when's the last play gonna be for Dominican Sue? But they didn't they didn't want to give it up. <laughs> Miscommunication on the snap, and now Kansas State's gonna be third and goal. About its 
three and a half four yard line. It looked like Carson Kaufman looked outside and found a favorable matchup bump and run coverage. He was trying to audible potentially get to a pass. The center snaps it as he's walking. They're very fortunate that hit Kaufman landed straight on the ground and you can see Bill Snyder upset and it's his birthday. And Bill said his birthday's just another day to him. This is certainly one he'd like to forget. Thomas headed for the pylon don't get there. Dejon Gomes Alonzo Whaley and it'll be fourth down. In order to stop a great ball player and a carrier you've got to have great effort and this defense not wanting to allow Thomas in the end zone just watch not going to draw just look at the way they pursue the football. But isn't this a great sign if you're a defensive coach you're a head coach of this football team the pride that your defense has. I mean, they're playing as fast and as intense right now as they were in the first quarter. Player down on the field for Kansas State just in front of where the tackle was made is Broderick Smith. He's a transfer from Minnesota. He's a native of Garden City, Kansas. Came back here to Kansas State to be a little bit closer to his young son, Blake. He's had a solid season in the early going. 14 catches for nearly 200 yards, three touchdowns in the season coming into the night. Been rather quiet as most of the Kansas State offense has been on this evening and Kansas State training staff attending to Smith. That's a guy that Kansas State does not want to lose. He's Carson Kaufman's go-to guy in the passing game. He's been the most explosive player they've had on the perimeter of the field early this season. You hope he's okay. They are starting to roll Broderick Smith over. And we take a look at the left side of the screen as Thomas was trying to get to the end zone to see if what we can happen, see what happened to number five. He's the wide guy outside. And it, as it happens a lot, you get someone rolls up into you. Alonzo Whaley rolled into the back of Smith's legs. When you're blocking downfield, you can never relax. Mm -hmm. You have to continue pushing and play through the whistle because you never know what's coming behind you. Mm. you know, one of Smith's teammates and fellow receivers, Tremaine Thompson, now over checking on his buddy right now. The staff is still looking at Broderick, and now it appears he is at least sitting up. There's Thompson there to give him a hand. See the trainers are being very careful with the left leg of Broderick Smith. So the situation for Kansas State will be a fourth down and goal. Kansas State had it down on the one yard line after the Carson Kaufman run, but the miscue on the snap moved it back and Daniel Thomas has been stopped a couple of times. This is a tough deal for Kansas State. You come into the game, you're 4-0, you're playing a division opponent, and really these are such big games early in the season because the loser of these division games really in essence falls two game behind the opponent. And Nebraska's been running it up and down the field on you. You've not played the way you want to play, and, and now you get a, an injury to one of your key players. And that's a tough deal. Good sportsmanship by John Gomes of Nebraska going over to offer his best to Broderick Smith. And you can see Smith's face he was in absolute agony as they're able to move him to the sideline as Bill Snyder makes his way back to the home sideline after going to check on his receiver. See they're working on the equipment apparently to try to immobilize the leg of Broderick Smith. He is down on the sidelines. We'll get the latest on his condition when you come back. Broderick Smith had the air cast put on his leg and the cart taking him toward the locker room. Heard on previous offensive play for Kansas State, the fine sophomore wide receiver. So his teammates are looking at a fourth and goal for about the two and a half yard line.
Cup and throwing to the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas State. It's Chris Harper. Well, I give Kansas State a lot of credit. Continue fighting late in this football game, trying to find positives so that your football team can move forward, executing red zone offense against a very good defense. It, it, it's the many victories within a game. It's playing the fourth quarter. It's finishing up because, as we've said, there's a lot of football in front of this Kansas State team. In order for them to be successful, they got to find good coming out of this. The extra point is true, and it is a 45. 13 game and as we continue on Thursday night one of the things that we've enjoyed I know that we've all enjoyed watching anyway is the worldwide workout tour that you two are on <laughs> well we all <laughs> pushing that deal it was a it was a five minute workout it's 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 a it's a difference maker at the end of practice you got to get over and 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 it's five minutes of intensity yeah, head strength coach Chris Dawson has his entire team do this. Not this right here, what I do. <laughs> Tr trying to do this spin move on the defensive end a la Taylor Martinez. It didn't really work yeah, out for me, but the whole point of these drills is, is to build mental toughness and, and to finish. And it's the last five minutes of every workout they have on the field. They put them through that gauntlet. That was tough. I mean, we were it was five minutes. We were we, we were gassed because we would rotate. He, you'd roll the tire. I'd roll the tire. And it just was it's intensive. You can imagine that, at the end of a practice that tire is 300 pounds, by the way. I'm just going to throw that out there just so that for everyone that saw that. But, you know, it, 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 it worked us out. That was unbelievable. Uh, you well, know, the one thing I wondered, though, you've been preaching to quarterbacks as the brass is returning the kickoff. Don't do more than you're capable of. Uh, I think maybe the spin move might have been outside your outside your comfort zone. Man. And I'm and I'm riding on his back. I'm really oh, concerned. No. Reese. Well, they went. Reese. They, they, <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. And, and great enthusiasm. You're able to kind of get it. It's a good technique to get it. I like a little bit of foot pattern. How much, how much did you say they weighed? Four, five hundred pounds? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, six hundred. Six hundred pounds. <laughs> Mark May, Mayday, give him a grief, man. He jumped in there and he was scared to death that he wasn't going to get that tractor tire Oh, up. man. I thought I wanted, I didn't know they were going to shoot it, but I just wanted to see if I could do it. Yeah. And then when I squatted down, I thought, Man, if I can't pick this up, I will never hear the end of this. You know? you, my forearms are sore from picking up that thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, the grip. Cody Green is checked in. Don Travius Robinson gets the carry, and football's on the ground. Kansas State says that they have it, but the ball might have been marked down and carry by Robinson. Let's check in with Jen Brown now. You guys are talking about how tough you are. I have an interesting thing to add. I was in the weight room waiting for you guys, and we had four girls, four trainers come in talking about how not tough you guys were. They said you guys weren't hustling, and they were really ragging on you. It's funny because they didn't know I was in there. So uh, they said you guys uh, weren't really meeting up to the standards of uh, the football team. I don't know. But, but Jen, they weren't really just talking about me, though, right? They were just talking about them? <laughs> not <laughs> a responsible opposing view. And right now, the, you saw Kansas State thought it had recovered a fumble, and right now they've sent the play up to the replay officials. Rodney Donald and Drew George serving as our replay officials tonight. Yeah, it looks like the knee is down. Well, I yeah. thought the knee was down with Don Travis Robinson. The ball gets ripped out. The question is, when is that ball ripped out according to where his knee is? You look at the bottom of the screen, it... it it's hard to tell if his knee is, is down. Remember, the call in the field was that he was down. So the, it, that indisputable video evidence right. must be out there for them to overturn the call on the field. Hey, I'm going to finish up on this daggum tire deal. That oh. that kind of workout, though, when you when you go through that with your body, man, your fanny, your legs from bending over, uh, you go 20 yards. That's just neat. Each school has a unique training method that they go through and uh i can't wait to see where we head next week next thursday west, west, virginia. Virginia. west virginia west virginia south florida and west virginia you know you know those strength coaches are watching this right now and they're devising something up right now to hurt us <laughs> i think about that every week now after doing those workouts well i i, I plan my week accordingly <laughs> oh man but the reward next week after you guys finish the workout is some pepperoni of rolls the pepperoni rolls yeah, that know, bill stewart favors oh, those, those are unbelievable Continuing to look to see whether Dontravius Robinson 
fumble before he was down, and here comes the call. After further video review, the play stands as called. As I'm sure you know by now, in college football, that particular verbiage means that there isn't enough indisputable video evidence or any indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. So Nebraska still has it. Cody Green is checked in. Taylor Martinez's night is done. Productive one indeed. Over 200 yards. Cody Green, who was very close in the quarterback derby in the preseason, takes over for the Huskers. Green will get a carry. He's up close to first down yardage. And Nebraska's got a unique situation and a fortunate situation. Because of this quarterback competition, they now believe they have three different guys who could play quarterback and win for them. And as you know, in college football today, with the amount of quarterbacks running the football in these zone read schemes and these spread offenses, guys get hurt. There is Zach Lee, who was a starter last year and threw for more than 2,000 yards. Senior, disappointing for him to be watching, but he's been a great teammate, according to all of the coaches. Nebraska keeps it on the ground. Austin Jones has checked in and gets his first carry of the night. But I think more and more coaches are starting to realize you probably need two quarterbacks at some point throughout the season if you're going to compete for championships. Eating chips and queso and watching a pretty important game last year, that came true, didn't it? Texas Longhorns lose their guy, and they don't have a quarterback over there that can run out there with experience and be effective. In the BCS championship game, when Colt McCoy went down and Garrett Gilbert came in against Alabama. His husband will see Garrett Gilbert next week. Green throws his first pass of the night, and it's complete and grabbed by Will Henry. The clock starts to wind down. A couple of seconds, more than eight minutes to go here in Manhattan. An impressive performance by Nebraska, both on defense and particularly with the explosive offensive plays. Yeah, that quarterback situation, Denard Robinson, he's been nicked up a couple of times. Terrell Pryor last week had to leave the football game. you got to have two guys at every position, especially quarterback. Enough for the first down, another carry for Dontravius Robinson. You know, guys, we've talked a lot about Bo Pelini wanting this team to become more consistent week in, week out, but it really starts at the top. And this is the third straight season now. This Nebraska Cornhusker coaching staff has stayed intact. So the consistency starts from the top. The players come back year in, year out. The same guys are there coaching them up, teaching them. One of only nine staffs in the yeah. country to say that. I mean, and you know, that, that kind of consistency is phenomenal, priceless. Cody Green firing again. It's almost intercepted. Ty Zimmerman had a shot at it. Boy, Bo Pelini has been a defensive architect everywhere he's been in college football. And you see Nebraska's defense was in complete disarray when he took over. But in now in his third season, already last year, turned into the best scoring defense in the country. And they're sitting right there with basically the same number this year. And I think what he's done is he's instilled that belief again that you can be a dominant defense. And he had a guy like Kendamakan Sue come in and show them how to do it on the field, which was contagious. Jared Crick and company have picked up where he left off. Jesse mentioned earlier why the scoring is so important. You saw the streak that Nebraska has, 12 straight, allowing 21 points or fewer. Alabama has the longest one at 18. Those two have been dominant defensive clubs. There's a great tradition in Nebraska with the black shirts on defense, and, and it's a high standard. It's a standard that these coaches take very seriously. Last year, they did not hand out the black shirts until very late in the season, but this season, Bo Pelini, Carl Pelini handed those out two weeks ago before the South Dakota State game. This is a defense they believe is buying in, and they deserve it. And, and it, again, it look, when you watch them play, it looks like that. Cody Green, plenty of room to run for the first down, and a bunch more. Cody gets inside the 30-yard line, and the Huskers are on the move again. I want to go back to that point you guys were talking about, the staff staying together. Obviously, loyalty is high on Bo Pelini's list. He's very loyal to his assistants. They, in turn, loyal to him. And of course, you expect your brother to be very loyal to you. 
But Carl Pellini had an opportunity to go to Tennessee as a defensive coordinator. He would have gotten a substantial raise. Now, I'm, I'm sure Carl's not hurting right now, but he opted. He knew he had a good defense coming back with Bowen. He opted to stay here and continue on in Nebraska. Jones on the carry. And, and you know what? And Carl Pelini will tell Bo things that maybe other coaches, assistant coaches, might not. He'll, he'll tell him what he not what he wants to hear, what he what he believes. Well, they have a trust with each other that, that runs very, very deep. And rest assured, this Nebraska team is not going to come away from this game feeling too good about themselves because both of these coaches, Bo and Carl Pelini, they will they stay in the here and now. They do not let this team look beyond next week's opponent. They're going to build on this and get better. Green will be hit in the backfield. Nebraska will be looking at a third down. David Garrett making the play. I can assure you that Bo Pelini, when they get in the locker room, might even come up with some type of negative from today. Oh, he will for sure. Just, you know, just to make him. It, it might not be as bad as a Lou Holtz, you know, where he jumps in. <laughs> Jesus, guys. You, but he will absolutely have them beginning to think they've got to work hard for next week. They're going to have to look long and hard to find something wrong with what Taylor Martinez did tonight, I think. Third down and six. Green. Now he's incomplete. He was looking for Kerensky Gillow. Guys, it's important not to forget, this is Nebraska's last season in the Big 12. They're heading off to the Big 10 next year. They have a big bullseye on their chest as they go through the Big 12 Conference. This is the last chance a lot of these opponents are going to have at them. They know they're going to go on the road. It's going to be hostile environments. But this football team, they're very resilient. You know, they're road warriors, and they stick together. I tell you what they are. Those chests are big. Yeah, they are. So they can handle a lot of arrows. Alex Henry has made 11 straight field goals. This one will be from 41 yards out. He is automatic. 48-13. Nebraska extends its lead. Saturday afternoon, three college football games available regionally on ABC or ESPN. Denard Robinson and number 18 Michigan taking on number 17 Michigan State. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ABC. 3.30 Eastern. Some of you may see Arkansas, Texas A&M, or Clemson and North Carolina. In last year's Michigan State win over Michigan in overtime, Denard Robinson had three carries for minus nine yards. He didn't throw a pass. It'll be a different Denard Robinson this Michigan State defense is going to see this Saturday. Greg Jones and their linebacker crew are really athletic. And, and so that, to me, I look for an open space to Denard to be challenged a little bit. You know, you always hear about these guys spying. Hey, there's no question that Denard can run it. Can he throw it? We, Kirk Cousins is talented. He's got a lot of players around him. This could be a good football game. I am shocked at how much of a better passer Denard Robinson is this year than where he was a year ago. I mean, it, it has been the greatest improvement, I, I think, of any quarterback I think I've ever seen in one offseason. Nebraska kicks it off, and Novak knocks it into the end zone again. You'll see Denard Robinson on Saturday, and we have certainly gotten a heaping helping of a running quarterback for Nebraska tonight. Wrangler, five-star player of the game, leaving no doubt, Taylor Martinez. Uh, yes, he did. He had a great game, but I'm going to go ahead and give a shout-out as well to Levante David on defense, who was unbelievable. If there were two awards to be given tonight, I'd say that's 1A and and one. Well, you know, Taylor <laughs> Martinez was embarrassed after his performance against South Dakota State. He took it personally to come back and have a big time performance lead this football team. What a bounce back job. As a leader, he's come a long way here tonight. And touchdown runs at 14, 35, 80, and 41. It's the second time this season he's gone. 80 yards, 369 total yards. He, ha he has to be out in front right now. When you're talking about National Freshman of the Year, at, at least the National Freshman of the Year right now, Taylor Martinez has to be at the top of that list. Remove categories of classifications or anything else. And back to a little bit what you said earlier. If this football team marches on in the same direction and style they are now, why wouldn't he be considered for the Heisman Trophy? 
There's absolutely no reason for him not to be considered. I mean, broken the precedent in recent years of, of sophomores winning it, and right. now Taylor Martinez, is a redshirt freshman, has an opportunity. Look at the school records that he set just tonight. Total yards by a freshman, rush yards by a quarterback, eclipsing the number that Jamal Lord put up, and four rushing touchdowns. Well, and rushing yards by a quarterback, considering there was another quarterback not, not too in the distant future that just won a Heisman Trophy in Eric Crouch. So that's pretty impressive. Samuel Lemur is in a quarterback for Kansas State. Completes his pass out to Braden Wilson. Wilson gets up close to the 45. And, and not to get out of control with, with the Heisman talk with Taylor Martinez, but we always say a lot of these Heisman winners play on teams that are winning and are highly ranked down the stretch. One of the things Taylor Martinez has going for him, he's got a great defense. I mean, if they keep they're winning, gonna, they're going to be a top 10, top 5 team. And they're going to get the ball back to Taylor Martinez to run more plays. They're going to be on television a lot, so voters get to see him. I think it's, it, it's absolutely credible to suggest that he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. Lemur has a short run. I agree with you, but it's always my job to rain on the parade. And this defense, even prior to this performance tonight for Kansas State, was ranked 102nd in the nation in rush defense. He's going to have far greater challenges. Frankly, as is Denard Robinson, he hasn't faced a good rush defense yet. He'll face a pretty good one Saturday at Michigan State, and he's going to face a great one after that in Iowa. And it'll give him an opportunity to build a high school foundation on something more than stats. So Martinez will get that opportunity too as Nebraska's schedule toughens. Murr with a tough run down to the fourth. You finished with the rain? Yeah, okay, so now you can yeah, go put pump my sunshine. Put my umbrella up? Yeah, pu pump some more sunshine. You didn't get me now. wet. I'm still high on him. <laughs> I'm not saying, so am I. I mean, you can't help but be high on him after watching him tonight the, and the show he put on at Washington a few weeks back. Against the guy that everybody assumed was going to be the guy, Jake Walker. And, and a guy who is a terrific quarterback, by the way. And uh, Jake had a rough day against his defense, but as you guys pointed out, a lot of guys are going to have rough days against the black shirts. Wow. Big time hit. Coming up, making that stick was Courtney Osmond. Wow. Berlin, Texas. I, I thought tonight really a difference in this game was the play of the safeties. Watch how fast Osborne comes up. It's the run. And he gets right in the face mask. You know, this is the time last year. Wow. This is the time last year when this Nebraska defense really gelled. It was week five. And they're doing it again this year at the same time. Lemur's pass complete for a short game. Saturday night, ESPN delivers an SEC showdown. Number 12, LSU, going to the swamp to take on Florida. LSU is still undefeated, though you couldn't tell it by some of the reaction after the Tennessee game. College football prime time presented by Hampton Hotels at ESPN. Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern time, available online and on your phone. That's interesting. LSU hasn't won in Gainesville in six years, but both teams really coming off kind of a low. Slant makes the first down. Adrian Hilburn with the catch. But you know what? I, 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 I just find it interesting how Florida, uh, just people throwing dirt on them. Like they're, 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 you know, I know that the, the Western Division over there is, is the strong division this year. And, but man, Florida's still got a great football coach and a lot of talented football players. The game was lost. Saturday night, but nothing else. Still win the East, still win the SEC. They run the table, still be in the national championship picture, one would imagine. You know, unless we have several undefeated teams. I, I, I think it was just the way they lost that scares a lot of people if you're a fan of Florida, because they were absolutely dominating. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to happen to a lot of those opponents, yeah, though. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> it's going to happen to a lot of people that play Nebraska, and it certainly happened to Kansas State tonight. Levante David was spectacular on defense. That's him number four for the Cornhuskers, and Bo Pelini has pushed his team to 5-0. and oh. Cornhuskers achieved that record for the first time since 2003.
three, and they have Texas coming in next week. Our final score for Manhattan, Nebraska 48, Kansas State 13. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Brown, and our entire Thursday night ESPN crew. I'm Reese Davis saying good night for Manhattan, where Team Magic Taylor Martinez put on a show. You in high definition by Vizio.